When I think about fishing the Great Lakes in spring, what I often think about is things like trolling crankbaits or trolling spinners. So when my good friend Dale Strohshine gave me a call and he said, hey, why don't you come up and do something completely different this spring? I said, well, what's that? He said, how about some rip jigging in deep water? I love to jig. I love going for big fish. So when I got the invite, I was here. So we're gonna go out on Green Bay, which is part of Lake Michigan. We're gonna be fishing deep and we're gonna be having a ball getting the next bite. Ooh, look at this. Now you know why they get so big. Just looking for the next bite, next bite, next bite, next bite. Just looking for the next bite. Versatile techniques used for catching walleyes. I think you'll want to get the net for this one, Dale. On the one hand, it's easy to learn, fun to do, and works in many different conditions. He comes up. He comes out. He comes around. There he goes down. But on the other hand, it's also a finesse-based technique, one that can take many years to come even close to being considered mastered. This one was obviously hungry. Yeah, you, you figure? He's not a real fatty. But he wanted that four inch minnow there. But this Green Bay walleye rip jigging bite isn't about having something up your sleeve as a pro tournament angler or even a guide. Up, up the sleeve. <laughs> because real success for this type of walleye bite is all about thinking the basics of the situation through in order to be as effective as possible with each cast. It's a little bit uh, tricky fishing out this deep. You're gonna be fishing a little bit heavier jig, about a three ace. And you first of all wanna make a pretty long cast because the water is clear, so you wanna get away from the boat, but you also wanna have some room to work that jig back. Now the first thing I do when that jig hits the water is I start to count. And the reason that I do that is sometimes, especially if it's a little windy out, it's hard to tell when that jig hits the bottom in deep water. And pretty much with a three ace ounce jig, if you count, each second will be a foot of drop. So if you know you're casting up into about 20, 25 feet of water, you're probably gonna have to count down 20 or 25 counts. So once you know it hit the bottom, then the next thing is to simply pop that jig pretty aggressively up off the bottom. You wanna get that fish's attention. So you pop it up off the bottom, but then after you pop it up, you wanna hold your rod up in the air and let that jig swim towards you on a tight line. Now, the key is out here is the water is cold. It's 48, 50 degree water. So they're not gonna just pound it all the time. In fact, they bite it three different ways we found out here. The first one is, is if that jig is swimming towards you on a tight line. If they happen to bite it while it's swimming towards you, you will get the classic tick bite. They're sucking it in, it's a tight line, tunk, you'll feel that bite. The second one that you're gonna get is when you go to lift that jig off the bottom, many times they're sucking it right off the bottom. This is called a presence bite. Basically, they've grabbed it. When you go to lift, there's a presence or a weight, set the hook. I'm setting into a rock, the edge of a rock. Something happened down there where I feel a little weight or presence, I set the hook. Hopefully, that rock starts swimming. Now, the third thing is, and, and this really is something that Dale talks a little bit about, is getting a bite on the up. And basically what's happening sometimes there is I think that fish is sitting there looking at that jig on the bottom and when you go to sweep it up, that first little movement, tail just starting to twitch and swim, that fish is sitting there in position, he grabs it and you actually, as you're coming up, get a bite. So you're gonna have to feel for three different bites. We're using sensitive rods, we're using no stretch line and right away when we feel anything, setting the hook and getting these fish in the boat. Yeah, come on. Just a jump. I don't know how big he is. Pretty slow head shake. Deep, holy man, 28 yeah. feet, that says. Like I said, they've been they've been running around pretty deep. My jig was just dropping through the water and all of a sudden the line just jumped. I didn't even really feel it, you know, in that deep water. You know, that's one of those advantages of going over to the nano fill with the bright color like that right? and the fire line because, you know, these things, when they hit it on the descent, you just see that tick and just set the hook. Well, in this deep water especially. A decent oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> I guess we know why he was hunkering Ooh. down now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, baby. Look at how he gobbled that thing up. Oh yeah, it just pounded that it. That four inch uh, minnow is gone. I mean, it's gone. They don't exactly need real natural looking colors here. We got pink, <laughs> we got purple, we got pink and white tail. He liked it though, he liked it a lot. That's a good fish there. <laughs> nice and stout and heavy. You know, and I, I like the fact that this one gave you the tick. Oh yeah. Because that tells us one thing, the water's <laughs> warmed up and they're on the munch. Nice. <laughs> we like munching <laughs> walleyes. <laughs> I like munching walleyes. I like them a lot. <laughs> the next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker Boats, Fish, the Finest, Bass Pro Shops, Your Adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustang, stay sharp longer. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, never stop. Strike King, number one in fishing lures. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. I'll tell you what, I deal with big water all the time. That's just where I do my living. I'm, I'm on the Bay of Green Bay all the time. And a question commonly asked is, where do you start? Because there's a ton of water and there's a ton of areas to go out and catch big walleyes. And one thing that I really try to key on is trying to find some color in the water. We've got a lot of zebra mussels up here now today that have cleaned this water up tremendously. And when you get a blow, and you get these shallow areas, the water's actually gonna chalk up. And if you can find those chalky areas, then what you wanna do is slide right up into the shallowest water you can find. And that can be anywhere from six feet out to about 15 feet. But the key, the spot on spots then are gonna be where the rock actually meets the sand, these transitional areas. Those are gonna be the best spots. If you have one of these days where it's just bluebird and it's been laid down for three, four, five days, and you have no color in the water, you don't have that chalk in the water, then what you wanna do is slide out to that 20 to 30 foot of water because a walleye is a walleye whether it's in Arkansas or whether it's up here in Door County and they're light sensitive so you always want to try to slide out to that deeper water to find those fish because that's where they're going to be hanging out. So next time you're up here in Door County and you're out jigging on the Bay of Green Bay, what color be the key to your success? He's a good one, Dale. Okay, all right. Right under the right, boat. Right, let, me get the, <laughs> let me get the net. I mean I just got to where I was done pulling it in and so I thought I'll make a hop or two here. He's even going down further. All right. Let me just back up here a little bit. So, there he I goes. mean, it ain't even, you just kind of hang in there, hang in there. It. That can be a good thing. <laughs> it can be a real good thing. <laughs> just kind of a lift it up and they're a dead weight, set the hook and the dead weight's got alive. Well, there are other critters in here. Coming up more. Oh, coming up more. Oh, There's color. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty hey, good looking hey, one. That's oh, a pretty good looking yeah, one. Yeah. Don't you net him? <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a really real good, good looking one. one. <laughs> that is a monster. Oh. I tell you what. Oh, and look at no, at no jig anywhere visible. Nope. I tell you what, when you think of fishing the Great Lakes, and you think of you know the big fish that are out there, you almost always think of trolling or something, but God, what a great way to come out here and catch these fish, just fishing a, a jig and a big piece of gulp on there and getting to feel the bite and smacking fish like that. Oh yeah. I mean, that is just a great, great fish right there. I don't know there. if it gets any better. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, catching big fish on a jig? I don't think it does, man. Yeah. I don't think it does. <laughs> God, you gotta love that. You just gotta love it. Fishing Experts, presented by Amsoil. The new HDS Gen 2 Touch comes in three sizes, a 7, a 9, and a 12 inch. The 7 can do all the same functions as the 9 and 12, only the 9 and 12 will have a video input as well, so you can hook underwater cameras up to them. The operations of the Touch is very simple. You can see on the Touch there are only a few keys, pages, zoom in, zoom out, waypoint, and power. The main button you're going to use is the page button. Press the page button, it brings you to the home page. So if we want to see a full screen chart, we just touch chart and it will load. If we want to see 
any of these other pages, all you do is touch them. You can also have these customized pages over here as well. So we've already set up this page right here. So we have our down view, our left right, and our map. If we want, we can press, hold, and slide this command bar out of the way, and you can utilize your full screen. To bring that command bar back, all you press is menu. If we want to adjust these panel sizes, we can press, hold, and slide down. Here we can adjust panel sizes, edit our data overlay. So if we want to slide this over just a little bit more, press, hold the screen, hit save. If we want to add data overlay, we press data overlay, add, GPS. We want our speed and our course over ground. We can take and slide them wherever we want to on the screen and hit save. These same features exist on the Gen 2 keypad versions that exist on the touch. They're just a lot easier and more user friendly to access on the touch screen. Targeting deeper depths in clearer water conditions. It was more one of those negative bites, you know, all of a sudden, uh -huh. just coming up and he was just there. I'm gonna punch in a waypoint for you too, Dale. All right, there we go. And then taking advantage of cloudy or shallow water when there's wind. Now it looks like there's a little bit of color here. Oh yeah. Eight feet deep, you can't see anything. Let's give him a look. <laughs> Keith Gavias and Dale Strohshine are using the walleye's own sensitivity to light against them as a precursor for choosing their spot on spots, which here on the Bay of Green Bay, so far has been sand rock transitions. Kind of a weird color though, I mean, this water here isn't that dirty that you would think you'd use a bright chartreuse bait like that, but obviously they like it, huh? Yeah. You like that, huh? Hell you like yeah. that? So for out here on Green Bay, uh, pretty simple stuff that we're using. First of all, you want to start out with a 3 8 ounce jig. Now, 3 8 might sound a little bit heavier, but remember, you know, you might be fishing all the way out to 30 foot deep, so you're going to need a little weight to feel the bottom. The other thing about that 3 8 ounce jig is that when you rip it up and then let it come down and hit the bottom, it's actually heavy enough, I think, to create a little disturbance, actually get their attention down there. Uh, when I'm picking out jigs, what I like to look for is what's called a semi stand up head, so that when that jig does hit the bottom, it keeps the bait and the jig slightly off the bottom, the hook slightly off the bottom. So if walleyes try and suck it off the bottom, you got a hook in good position to get them. Now as far as what you want to use on the back of that, we've been using the four inch gulp minnows. Two colors have been pretty good. The pink shine and by far maybe our best has been this chartreuse shad. Different kinds of colors I guess than I would normally pick. A lot of people when they think clear water, they think you should use a real natural looking color. But Dale real quickly convinced me you go with these brighter colors here out on Green Bay. When you are hooking this up on your line, make sure that when you hook this up that that minnow is nice and straight. You don't want to get the hook coming too far back here and things are curled. You don't want to be too short and then you don't run it up tight to the head. So just run this body up tight to the head. Make sure you're fishing it down on the bottom. Give it a pretty good rip when it's down on the bottom to get their attention. You're going to catch some fish with these four inch gulp minnows. This was a present. Present. Well, I like presents. Oh boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> this it, could be not only a presents bite, but a big present. I, it, this is a walleye. We're in really good shape. I see a little color. <laughs> get the dart, get the dart. There, oh, he's oh. a good one. That's a good one, Dale. Very big one. Oh. If you get him up here, I'm not going to go that deep for him. But <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm trying to, but he, he does not want to come up. Didn't want to come up and see this net. Oh huh? boy. Come on. Oh. Oh, oh, I got yeah. him! <laughs> Woo. Oh, yeah! Look at that fish! That is a pig! Look at the gut on this thing! Woo. Look at the gut on that monster! <laughs> Mr. Strohshine, <laughs> you got some weight going on! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I think that is a present. Well, you said you wanted a present. And that is a present fish. Presents, On presents. A presents bite. Here, take your fish oh, there, young thank man. You. I'm gonna Beautiful take my fish. Present. Give me that rod. Wow, Give me that rod. You know, Keith, he's got like a big white fish down in his gullet. I can see here. Check this out. Really? Look at this. This guy is a total pig. He just <laughs> knocked the snot out of my gulp. And look at, he's got a big white fish or something hanging in there. Let me just see if I can gently pull that out and so we'll see what it is. <laughs> look at here. <laughs> Little big oh. this. <laughs> now you know why they get so big. I think Ooh. we should be using bigger than four inch yeah, gulp. Four inch gulp. We could use like 
16 inch cups. <laughs> that's a weight fish, that's a walleye. That's what they're eating. Wow. Get her back in, All she's right. had enough on here. All right, Keith, we're gonna let this one go back in. information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman presented by mercury another day in the water fishing fishing with the mercury four strokes the technology engines you know you look here at the the 75 horse you know if we're out trolling pulling crankbaits yeah, that engine can probably keep us at that two two and a half miles an hour to get some fish on but it's time to start throwing the crankbait we got to slow it down so on the 75 the 150 or even the big 300 Verado. You know, what you can do is throw a sock out, you can put the power pole out with the paddles, bring that speed down. People wonder, is it detrimental to the life of the engine? Well, first of all, you think about a four-stroke. A four-stroke is a multi-port fuel injection engine. That means the air and the fuel is being regulated at 100%. It's accurate, the engine doesn't load up. Secondly, every component inside the engine, whether it's the rocker arms, the camshaft, are bathed and have a coating of oil on them. So it reduces friction, cleans the engine, and again, they're designed to run at that low RPM all day. Now, unique to Mercury is SmartCraft technology up on the gauge. We actually have a little button you press and it's called troll control. We can lower the RPM in increments of 10 RPM, fine tuning it, so whether it's the crankbaits or the spinning baits you're pulling, you know, Mercury can deliver the trolling speed that you want. So far we've learned not only where to look and why, but also what gear to bring along when rip jigging for clear water Green Bay walleyes. What does he feel like? Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's code for get the net, huh? <laughs> and while the focus has been mostly on the presentation end of Keith and Dale's lines. He's just stay. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh yeah. Oh, Ooh, nice ooh. fish, nice fish. Frankly, choosing the right line for certain adverse conditions can also be a huge help as well. I don't see any jig there. Keith, that's that tick there slamming into the back of his throat. Look at here, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go in for We're it. Going man. deep, baby. There it is, right there. All right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Nice job. One thing that we're doing today when we're rip jigging like this, that by using some type of a super line, first of all, like the nanofill that we're using today, it cuts the air really well, like if it's windy out, it's such thin line diameter that you'll have less of a bow in your line, which will enable you to keep up with your line when you're jig fishing. Not only that, the sensitivity of it is really helpful. The one thing though that we do also when we're doing this rip jigging, not only are we using nanofill, we're using a floral carbon, 100% floral carbon, and I'm using 12 pound line, and the one thing that you're gonna find out is when you're using nanofill, you could tie direct. Because of the thin diameter, and we're dealing with zebra mussels, sometimes it doesn't hold up as well, so what we're doing is, I've got a nice little knot here going from my nanofill right over to my floral carbon, and the floral carbon is much more resilient, so next time you go out and you're gonna be walleye fishing and you're gonna do this rip jigging, Make sure you get yourself and you set up with some nanofill and floral carbon and you're going to have a great time. With some wind moving in off the bay in the afternoon, Keith and Dale are able to move in shallower, undetected thanks to the chalking up of the water. Dale, you better get the net. I didn't think he was this big, but he's just stuck down on the bottom now. All right. And I pitched way up in shallow for that one. <laughs> and the result of this move is about to solidify that for this rip jigging bite, it's all about gaining access to the spot on spots when available. Oh, Dale, that's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the depth itself that can give you the best opportunity for your next bite. You ready, man? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm gonna use them to you. Get him, get him! <laughs> oh, oh, look, look at, at that. this thing. Look Ooh. at this beast. He just gobbled on that oh. four inch gold minnow. Ticky, tick, tick, tick. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually thought it was a rock, but I set the hook anyway, and the rock started to swim. Oh, <laughs> those are my favorite. <laughs> Look at the two big fangs he's got up here, right here. 
Yeah, they start getting that big, they look like Count Dracula. Oh man, look at this fish. <laughs> <laughs> man, he's got some weight to him too. I bet you this fish, fish is pushing on 30 inches. Huh? Oh yeah, there's no question. Golly, look at that. Big, and he's real, uh, you see how much uh, like browner he is or colored he is like that? It must be that clear water in here is letting that light come through and give him this color. There we go. Look at him, Dale. Oh yeah. Ooh, nice, nice. Thank you for taking me jigging, man. This is excellent. <laughs> this is excellent. Yeah. <laughs> man. Nice. Oh, oh. What are you doing in there, man? <laughs> I have a sandwich between casts here. Letting it sink down there. Yeah, right? You heard me right. We're going to be jigging. So we're gonna go out and fish some rocky structure. We're gonna be, I don't know why I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna be going out and doing some rip jigging in really deep water. It's a great way to catch fish. It's a fun way to get fish. And it's really, ah, dang it. Come on, this is gonna. Don't you got a rain suit? Yeah, but I keep thinking it's just gonna end. <laughs> and it starts up again. Yeah, fishy, come on. Be my little fishy. The next bite would like to thank guide and Lake Michigan fishing expert Dale Strohshine of Sand Bay Beach Resort and Suites. For more information on Dale or Sand Bay Beach Resort as a premier wedding, lodging, or fishing destination, be sure and visit sandbaybeach.com.